Hello everyone, it's great to meet you online. Thanks to organizers of Micro Unity, Professor Ye Guang and his group. They have made a great effort to make this webinar happen so that we can share our research progress here online. Today, I will introduce our recent research progress on the chemical admixture and their impact on the microstructure of concrete. This presentation contains four parts, which are extracted from four papers that is recently published by my group. The first part is about PCE and the origin of cementitious material, which is from a review we published last year in CCR, from superplasticizer to the workability of a concrete. Four questions should be addressed. The first is the superplasticizer and the rheology property of a paste. The second question is the relationship between the origin of a paste with the aggregate containing system. Then, the third question comes to the workability of a concrete. Final question is that the surface environment and the property of raw materials will affect the final workability, which is the so-called compatibility problems of a superplasticizer. Superplasticizer affects the microscope interaction, while the performance depends on the condition and the raw material. PCE are the most effective chemical mixture to improve the flexibility which reduces air stress and uh, apparent viscosity. As can be seen from the scheme, there are three different schedules of PCE molecules in the system. First, some molecules remain in the poor solution, which enhance the solution viscosity and affect air stress through the so-called depletion force. Second, some absorb on the surface of a partic particle, which could increase the separation distance, improve the particle packing, and sometimes also induce bridging between particles. The last part is embedded by the hydration product, which is a situation with the com compatibility. Besides, interestingly, both the solution and the absorption part will affect the hydration process and finally change the rheology properties. It is important that all these effects really depend on the conformation and absorption behavior of PCE. We have tried different methods to understanding what is happening at the microstructure level to investigate the conformation of PCE. Different strategies are developed, including experiment technologies, DLS, AFM, theoretical calculation, and uh, computational simulation. Based on above mentioned models, we can simply design the molecule to get a higher absorption affinity by reducing graphene density, reducing side chain length, increasing surface charge density and reducing ionic strength. In the following part, the performance of PCE and the compatibility would be introduced. The dispersing performance of PCE comes from the reducing of air stress. PCE absorption could destroy larger flocks, therefore improving packing and reduce the true volume fraction. The performance depends on the surface coverage of PCE. The lowest yield stress appeared at nearly full surface coverage, after which depletion force might increase the air stress. The enlarged separation distance also reduces the apparent viscosity. It should be noted that the increase of the viscosity of the solution phase becomes more obvious after a certain dosage, which induces the increase of the apparent viscosity. In application, compatibility problems always occur associated with the environment, time development, and the property of raw materials. The inappropriate application might induce no initial slumps, rapid slum loss, and set retardation. Also, it should be noted that the flowability Test always take a certain time period. The result should always be time dependent. One of the most important environment dependent compatibility 
is due to the temperature. Since the absorption and hydration process are both temperature dependent, the absorption is always slower and weak at a lower temperature. Higher dosage is required to achieve property initial slant, which always induces bleeding at a later stage. The time dependent compatibility about initial slant is closely associated with the hydration of C3A at the very beginning. One of the key parameters is the ratio between sulfate and C3A. It is reported that chemisorption occurred for the ratio below 1.3, and a delay addition of the PCE is more effective. For the ratio above 2, FT is the primary hydration product. Delay addition is not so effective. Another important issue is that PCE absorption makes the actual guide crystal fine. The size morphology depends on the PCE structure and concentration. This is critical for the early rheology process. The mixing procedure is also important, which is different in application from test condition. The mixing intensity is different in the presence of aggregate. The initial dispersing performance by standard test procedure seemed to be comparable, yet the dispersing speed is completely different. With the time going on, retarding might occur based on literature. After the full coverage of actual guide surface, PCE absorption on C3S delays the hydration. For an aluminate and silicate phase mixed system, four stages could be observed. observed. PCE absorbs on the silicate phase and hydration is retarded. The delay time is concerned with the total amount of the carboxylic group added. To improve the slime retention performance, PCE containing chain unit with a small S group is developed. The hydrosis promotes the continuous absorption of PCE and slime retention. Recently, phosphate-based PCE is demonstrated to exhibit excellent compatibility due to the high absorption affinity. To make a short summary for PCE, more research has been devoted to understand the action mechanism of PCE in the sementitious materials and to establish the relationship between molecular structure and its impact on the properties of fresh concrete. With the help of advanced analytical equipment and computational models, we come to a better understanding on the compatibility between the mixture and the cementitious material. The second part is the temperature rise inhibitor. The part is done by my PhD student Yang Yu, who is co-supervised by Professor Karen in EPFL. Similar hydration is an exosomic reaction. Temperature gradient may build up in mass concrete, lead to thermal cracking. It has delay only the appearance of a main hydration peak, which does little to help solving the thermal cracking issues. A novel admixture named Temperature Rise Inhibitor TRI brings a new approach to solve the thermal cracking issues by controlling the exosomic process during the same hydration. TRI is prepared from corn starch by controlling the reaction condition and the time. The properties, including the molecular weight distribution and the solubility of TRI, can be quantitatively controlled. TRI is insoluble in cold water, but partly soluble in alkali solution, along the increasing of pH. The Dissolution rate of TRI increased gradually. The consumption of TRI in the same past is controlled by the limited dissolution process. The TRI can lower the height of the main hydration peak at a very low dosage. It will introduce a slight extension of the induction period and a later peak time. Due to the depression of the main hydration peak, the cumulative heat is significantly decreased by up to 19% at one day. Interestingly, 
after the main hydration peak, another bolt peak appeared and bring a cumulative heat back to normal levels after a few days. However, when the TRI is pre-dissolved, the shape of the hydration curve is not significantly changed. Therefore, an interaction between the dissolution of the TRI and the same hydration can be expected. To better understand how TRI affects the hydration kinetics at the microstructure level, the hydration process of the same past with solid and predissolved TRI was studied by high solution SEM. It can be clearly seen that TRI partly inhibits the nucleation of CSH, while has little impact on the needle growth. In comparison, PDTRI has a little effect on the nucleation and the growth of CSH needle, but rather the distribution of CSH class on the same surface. TRI can significantly change the a current time of maximum heat flow range from 11 hour to 18 hour. However, the needle length of CSH at the peak time remains around 450 nanometer to 500 nanometer. Together with the result shown in the acceleration part, we assume that CSH needle growth is very stable and not affected by TRI. On the surface of the same particle, much less CSH needle can be seen. It means that TRI can partly inhibit the precipitation of CSH while never fully block it. Based on the SGM result, the needle model is used to verify the effect of TRI on the nucleation of CSH and the heat flow of same hydration. As can be seen in the figure, the needle model works well in the same system. The error between measured heat flow and the fitted curve remains lower than 10%. Both STRI dosage and heat released by 24 hours fit well with the CSH nucleation density, which strongly supports the hypothesis that STRI depressed the main hydration heat and lowered the heat release by mainly affecting the nucleation of CSH. The effect of the delay addition of TRI was further tested by the needle model. The addition time changed the initial nucleation density in the same past and the dissolution process of TRI in the same past. TRI continuously inhibited the CSH nucleation over its dissolution process to lower the main hydration peak. There is a limited time window that PDTRI can inhibit the CSH nucleation. Sufficient nuclei are already formed in the same past. PDTRI is unable to affect the same hydration anymore. An overview of the mechanism of TRI on same hydration is shown in the figure. Both experimental and simulation results strongly indicate that STRI partly inhibits the nucleation of CSH to depress the main hydration peak. PDTRI shares exactly the same mechanism but focused mainly on the induction period to understanding what is happening for the second peak at a later hydration. First, we used a mixture of a pure monophase C3S, C3A and gypsum. In pure C3S system, the addition of TRI depresses the main hydration peak. After the peak time, the heat flow never increased again and the cumulative heat is very much lower than the blank sample. C3S blended with the gypsum shown similar effect. When C3A is added, the second peak appears after the end of the main hydration peak. In the same system, 
The shape of second peak is the sensitivity to the gypsum quantity. That is to say, the reaction of the illuminated phase is uh, crucial to the occurrence of the second peak. XRD with in situ measurement was used to show the phase evolution of the monophase system and the OPC system from the very beginning to the end of the second peak. 3S system, the second peak is attributed almost entirely to the reaction of the C3S. Regarding the SGM image, during the second peak, new batches of CSH leader can be observed on the C3S surface. Compared to the monophase system without C3S addition, Atrocat helps to pump out TRI in the same past and eliminate its inhibition on CSH nucleation. A clear difference of CSH morphology can be seen between TRI system and the blank after 72 hours. First, less evidence of the formation of the honeycomb structure. Second, the appearance of a batch of newly formed CSH leaders. The ongoing formation of actual guide pumps out TRI from the same pass in a slower speed compared to the monophase case. Once TRI is running out, CSH starts to nucleate it and grow as a normal. When adding more gypsum into the cement, both the onset time and the corresponding heat release increase linearly. That is to say, the onset time of the second peak is overlapping with the onset time of the illuminated peak. The effect of TRI on the latter hydration is closely related to the chemical composition of the cementitious material. Formation of the aggregate helps the absorption of TRI polymer, takes it out of solution, and uh, allows the renewed nuclearization and the growth of CSH. To summarize, TRI is a fully new starch-based material that is used to solving the problem of concrete thermal cracking. It lowers the main hydration peak rather than only delay the peak time. TRI reduces the number of CSH nuclei but will not affect the CSH needle growth. The appearance of the second peak is determined by the CSH surface TRI balance. Formation of aggregate helps to absorb the TRI polymer, take it out of the solution and allow the renewed nucleation and the growth of CSH. The third part is SAP, which is contributed by another PhD student, Zhong Peihua, who is co-supervised by Petra Lura Empa. As we all know, the lower water cement ratio and the fine pore result in the degrees of relative humidity and the increase of capillary pressure and autogenous shrinkage. High strange concrete is very dense even at the early age, so that extra water curing is limited. Therefore, internal curing with the superabsorption polymer can mitigate the autogenous shrinkage efficiency. SAP is a polymer hydrogel composed of polyelectrolyte chains, which are covalented, cross-linked to form a three-dimensional polymer network. When immersed SAP in water, because of the capillary action, water comes into the SAP, and then the electrolyte on the chain dissociated. The different concentration between inside and outside of SAP will produce automatic pressure. The motivation of this study is to provide a better understanding of the effect of SAP chemistry on their performance and eventually on the properties of internally curing cementitious material. Here, we use inverse suspension method to produce SAP and spherical particle without a crash. A total of eight types of SAP were synthesized with the different chemical composition. The effect of cross-linked degree, an optical tip, and 
quantity are coincided. All different SAP types are in the form of spherical particles with a dry particle size is around 100 to 110 mm. The ability to absorb, store, and release water is the essential performance of SAP. The left figure shows the absorption kinetics of SAP with the different chemical structures in DI water. After a rapid initial intake of water at a short time, the absorption reached an effective plateau after about 180 minutes for all SAP. The initial absorption of an ionic SAP immersed in the cementitious filtrate is higher with a higher an ionic drop density. No fluid release was observed for AM-based SAP and zitronic SAP because they have less or no ionic drop in the network. Increased cross-linked density also did to decrease absorption when immersed in same filtrate. The absorption of an ionic SAP was much lower in the same filtrate than in DI water because higher ionic concentration in the same filtrate decreased absorption driving force. Then we studied the effect of SAP on autogenous shrinkage of a same past. The reference mixture continued to shrink significantly over time. Adding all types of SAP will strongly reduce the autogenous shrinkage. An ionic type of SAP were able to even induce expansion during the first days. By considering the effect of different cross-linked density of SAP, an ionic SAP and zitronic SAP with lower cross-linking density show better initial curing performance because of the higher absorption, but for AM-based SAP, the absorption and the internal curing performance doesn't change with the cross-linking density. We chose two types of SAP with a completely different absorption ability to conduct the X-ray tomograph on PEST. Through the image analysis, we found both SAP cavity in the same PEST will be saturated until final set time, which means that the water will be contained in the cavity even for the SAP was a fast fluid release at an early age. For SAP N, the water will be absorbed during the mixing and saturated SAP is forming a cavity in the fresh past. The water mostly remains in the SAP before final setting. After final setting, most part of the absorbed water will be released to the matrix around the cavity due to the capillary pressure. For SAPA, the first stage is the same. Then part of the water will be released, while part of the released water remains in the cavity until the final setting time, and then released to the matrix around the cavity. To summarize, SAP with a high density of an ionic groups should the rapid absorption in same filtrate. All SAP synthesized in this paper mitigated autogenous shrinkage, albeit to different extents. SAP with a high absorptivity shows better internal curing performance. SAP with a rapid liquid release after initial absorption in the T-bag experiments were able to eliminate autogenous shrinkage. Once the solution filled cavities in a fresh cementitious material were established after mixing and passing, these cavities remain stable whether the water in SAP is released or not. In the last part, I will introduce a new type of cementitious materials that are designed and prepared with hydrogel, which is mined down by Professor Fen, an excellent young researcher in our group. Underwater adhesion is technically challenging because of the presence of water. The worst enemy for any glue. Water 
drastically weaken the mechanical properties of an adhesive and prevent good contact with the surface. Recently, inspired by the marine organisms such as the mussels and the barnacle, strategies to achieve strong and stable underwater adhesion has been developed. Compared to commercial glue, bioinspired adhesive with much higher under adhesion strength have been developed. Here we introduce a faster but a powerful method to produce a bio in split underwater adhesive sieve. Starting with a simple blending of the acrylamide monomer, cross link, initiate, and cementitious filler to form an injectable hydrogel precursor. Then we can inject it directly onto the substrate surface. The hydrophilic hydrogel matrix can absorb and squeeze out of the surface water by swelling. After generation, the continuous formed products like the atrogate and homogeneous disrupted, which feature interconnected network composed of thin polymer walls with a tiny crystal ground inside, need to mechanically reforce the system. Both tension and compression test confirmed that the load capacity of the hydrogel was improved significantly with the increase of mite content and all the samples remain stable under both tension and compression. The remarkable underwater bonding performance can be attributed to a couple of prospects. One is the strong cohesive of the matrix. The matrix strength has a sustainable increase during the hydration process. Another one is related to the product's contribution to enter the adhesive onto rough surface, as shown in SEM and three-dimension X-ray tomograph. To quantify the adhesion strength, we performed lab shear adhesive experiments on various substrates following ASTM F. 2255 standard. The result shows that the adhesive exhibits strong adhesive on various substrates, especially on both ceramic and aluminum substrates. In the left figure, we summarized the adhesion strength reported by previous literatures as a function of substrates. In general, our nano composite adhesive percent a universally outstanding underwater bonding ability on diverse substrates. Compared to commercial glues, the hydrogel adhesive not only has the highest initial adhesion strength, but also are able to endure the long-term immersion underwater. One exciting feature of this adhesive is the continuous gain on adhesion strength rather than losing the bonding capacity with time like ordinary glues. For a brief summary, we demonstrate a hybrid adhesive with a fast, strong, and durable underwater adhesion capacity. The long-lasting hydration process provided the source of a reinforced crystal for the adhesive. The adhesive presents a universal bonding solution to diverse surfaces underwater and has a superior underwater bonding property compared to other commercial products. Conclusion and perspective. To conclude, this is the advance of some new chemical mixture and their inflows on the concrete properties are summarized. In the future, we still need to focus on the practical needs from the practical engineering to really improve the performance of a chemical admixture. More fundamental research are needed to get the original innovation in the area of chemical admixture and also concrete technology. Sustainable chemical admixture not only for sustainable semi-teacher material, but also sustainable resource products and application, for example, by technical based materials. At last, I would like to appreciate the program that funding our research 
and I also my research groups, both in Southeast University and Sobert. Thank you for your attention. Wish everyone a good health in this special time.